everyone, this is Cyrus Ojai. We are here at the Artemis Ham Concert Hall. And as you can see here, we have Al Gore that's about to speak with Harry Reid regarding climate change. Shelley Berkeley? Yes, we Okay, are. Shelley Berkeley, I have a question. Do you think we have to change the way we build our cities on the outer fringe uh, to, to stop this uh, emission? Concern. I think it's uh, that and so much more. Um, I think Vice President Gore really left us, even though at the beginning of the speech, about three quarters of mm -hmm. it, I was feeling very, very disappointed and saddened and worried. But the last quarter, I think he gave us a lot of hope. Okay, but the problem is if we keep building the Summerlands and the Green Valleys and the Southern Highlands of the world, that's not helping. Well, and you I build these low quality I tracked homes which wear off in a short time and then people have to build more homes, that's not helping. Well, I think in terms of countries like Israel who have figured out how to husband their water supply so that they can have continued growth. And I think that's hope for the Middle East, the entire Middle East, and it's also hope for desert communities like Las Vegas. Okay, that's a good point. So I propose some alternative developments. I've been voicing opposition to the KB Homes and the Lennars of the world because what they're doing is, is a mess. We, in the last 90 years of urban planning and architecture. Well, from what I understand, and I've been out of office for a number of years now, but from what I understand, they're building these homes in a very energy efficient way, water conservation, solar panels. But I don't think they're good enough. They still need a car to go for their daily necessities. Well, that may be. And as, as um, uh, Vice President Gore pointed out, the civil rights movement, the gay rights movement, the women's rights movement takes time, but we get it done. And I'm hopeful for that with the environment as okay. well. And with that, I have to get to the A couple of questions. Should we raise taxes? Should we control immigration to help the climate crisis? Because when my father came from Iran, he produces more emissions than he did living in Iran. I mean, do you think that maybe having a change in immigration has an impact? Should we raise taxes like they do in California? because I want the choice to be more efficient. I drive a Toyota Prius, um, but nobody I, tells me. I have me. a hybrid a Camry, so I uh, agree with you. I'm gonna answer those two questions and then I'm gonna get going. Sure. The first question is, as the granddaughter of immigrants to this country, I am a proponent of, of immigration. I think immigrants add to the diversity and But it affects our environment. Uh, yes, and if they were back where they were, it would be that uh, they'd be dead. So you could make a choice of what's more important. Uh, the other question was... Should our taxes go oh, up to think, like they do in California? I think people in this country are willing to pay pack taxes if you can demonstrate that they're going somewhere useful. Just raising taxes for the sake of raising taxes with no explanation of why you're doing it, I think people resent that. But if they buy into what you're doing and this is a national imperative, I think people would be willing to pay for their for a positive future for their children and grandchildren. I gotta go. Thank Hey, great Thank pleasure. You. Great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. So, much. so uh, I believe in incentives and I believe American citizens come first. So, thank you. I think one thing to improve climate change is less Summerlin style developments because Summerlin style developments produce a lot of emissions. We have to change how we build on the outer fringe. I have alternatives to that. Immigration doesn't help, too, either, you know. So basically, I have no opinion on whether anthropogenic man-made climate change is real or not. But I'm pretty suspicious about the fact that you have Al Gore, who doesn't do what he preaches. He lives in a pretty large house. He certainly, as far as I know, doesn't drive a energy-efficient car. Not to mention his track record speaks louder than his actions. He promoted NAFTA and China trade, which basically allowed a lot of missions to come into space and around the world. Not to mention he doesn't really address the Wall Street bankers, which is 
probably, or depending on how you look at it, causing a lot of our environmental problems by providing all this easy credit. And let's not forget Harry Reid. Well, he lives in a guard-gated neighborhood. That's not carbon friendly. And you look at his track record, the Solyndra's, all his green energy programs, which have a lot of controversies, not to mention with the Bundy Ranch incidents. And by the way, speaking of the environment, doesn't mass immigration actually hurt the environment because immigrants actually, believe it or not, give off more emissions than they did in their native countries, not to mention all the sprawl and housing development it creates all over the world, especially the Las Vegas Valley. Well, think about that. So he wanted all this immigration so we can pump the culinary union so he can get more votes and his politicians that he supported. They're giving out free food, but my question is: Is this food, is this food organic, or is it produced efficiently? Because, okay, well I hope so. Because that's what is mine. Well, because I buy 90% of my food organic, and then the other 10% uh, yeah. close standard. We are here at the Al Gore Sustainability UNLV event at this hall. And who are we here with? Um, I'm Kimberly Gonzalez. I'm a student here at UNLV. Okay, and what brings you here? Um, I'm just really interested in uh, what Al Gore had to say about climate change. I don't really have an opinion on it because mm -hmm. some people say that it is happening. Other people say that it's just kind of part of like the Earth natural process. So I just wanted to see. So I don't have an opinion on it either because I am not a scientist. So I'm not a qualified person to, to tell. But it's good that you're here, you want to open your mind, see a few things. So it seems like we have a lot of people here that are not sure whether it's real or not. Uh, so basically, do you believe that we should go into renewables, right? Yeah. Okay. I think renewables are promising. I think we should go to renewables if it's cheaper and more cost effective. And so basically, a lot of people can agree with that. Uh, the thing is, is though that a lot of people argue that renewables require a lot of energy to produce, the solar panels, wind turbines. One of the issues I've had with this event, they didn't mention hardly anything about geothermal and wave and tidal, because you can argue that those systems are probably more efficient, but he has not talked about that. So well, we have a lot of geothermal potential here in Nevada, actually. So should we get into renewables if it costs two times more? Because I know he talked about the fossil fuel gaining subsidies, but if the output of renewable energies is going to cost us twice as more, should we still do it, yes or no? Um, I think it just depends. If climate change is actually a legitimate thing and is actually happening, I think we should get into renewables even if it costs more just to ensure a better future mm -hmm. for everyone. But mm -hmm. I think if... Um, like, I, I don't really have an opinion on climate change, so I think if, if it, after doing my research, if um, climate change isn't necessarily um, a bad thing, I don't think we should get into renewables if it costs more. Because so. a lot of people say that renewables have jacked up their prices, 
there have been scandals with renewable energies like Solyndra and things like that. So if there is a self-interest behind this, I am certainly not for it. Now, there are many states like California uh, that are imposing increases in tax per gallon on gasoline for climate change. They're actually planning to charge restaurants 1% for climate change. Do you think we should do that? I mean, do you think we should burden the average person to solve for climate change? Or should we just give them incentives? Like, well, I drive a Toyota Prius, I have an incentive, all the things that I have. Do you think it should just be like that? Or do you think that lawmakers should just put fines and like taxes on people? Uh, what do you think? Um, I think we're already being taxed and fined enough. So any more taxes would kind of be a negative. I think incentive incentives or um, uh, like yeah incentives uh, would be a better choice like in the form of like uh, tax reduction things like that it would be a better choice. so what if there is like a greedy politician who says that we need to solve climate change raises your taxes as an excuse then takes that money and gives it to people who don't deserve it or it caused a lot of disruptions in our economy. Would you call him out on that? I mean, I just wouldn't vote for him. I would vote for someone else but after. The that's the problem. You know, it's. Uh, you could argue that maybe some of these guys are trying to pump corrupt people and they're using the green mask to do it. Uh, just another question I just wanted to ask is do you think part of the problem of the emissions? I, I can't say climate change because I don't know if it's anthropogenic caused by man, but. Uh, nevertheless, oh wow, we're certainly getting a lot of wind. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, Las Vegas has had wind for centuries, so anyway. Oh, shoot. See, that's the problem. So, we gotta stay close. We're gonna edit that part. Okay. Sorry. So, one of the problems with Las Vegas, and one of the reasons why people emit a lot of particles, is because the way our cities are designed. So you can argue, why are these buildings two-story where they can be six stories? Everything is so far apart. People who live in studio apartments need a car to get from point A to point B just to buy a loaf of bread. So do you think that one of the things we should do is we should incentivize, let builders build cities that are close to more of your incentives? Because very few of us live in homes with huge backyards. I don't know if you've seen the homes around here. They're pretty close together. Yeah, so I think um, a big... I, well, something that would help a lot with emissions would be, um, I guess, an increase in using public transportation. I know when I go to a different city, they have a really effective subway and metro system. That's um, it's cost effective. It's really cheap, and um, it's even Chicago has a good system. Yeah, I, I had Chicago in mind. All things in Chicago. The L train that was pretty nice. Yeah, and in in some areas, taking the subway is faster. Than So I think um, a big, um, I guess a, a big way to decrease emissions would just be to increase or in, increase the reliability and also the availability of um, faster public transportation systems. So the thing I just wanted to point out that this current system of spreading out to the cities, needing a car for everything. That is still going. The cul-de-sacs, the shopping centers separated from that. One of the things I might disagree with you is that mass transit can be built if it's cheaper and faster than the car. Because if it's not, especially in this state where we have Uber and Lyft. By the way, Mr. Gore did not talk about Uber and Lyft. So you can argue that that makes it more efficient because if you get a pool ride, you can actually do multiple trips. So mass transit has to be cheaper and faster they shut down the light rail proposal they're going to do bus rapid i say we can build personal rapid transit something that where you go in a pod in a wire and you go from point a to point b without stopping for anybody and i also believe that the way to encourage more people to walk is we have to build because you want to live in a single family home do you yeah you want a yard right yeah okay but to make that work, our shops, offices, and other services, apartments would have to look like single family homes to be close together, but we don't have that. We used to have that in the old fashioned cities. So do you think that we should encourage more of those developments, like I'm proposing 30 miles south? I'm, I'm a little confused 
on your question, what, like, should we encourage to... more uh, pedestrian friendly development where pe most of the people still live in homes with yards and they need a less reliance on the car? Oh, yeah, I, I definitely think that. I know um, I've been to other cities and they have, um, yeah, they're, the houses are right next to stores. So mm -hmm. it's just um, like where I live right now, it's. Um, Sorry, <laughs> I'm losing. I, I'm, I'm kind of lost for words. But yeah, where I live right now, I have to walk 30 minutes just to get out of my neighborhood and go to the closest gas station. And it's just the, the 30 place. minutes? Um, around that time. Because it, I mean, I could jump the wall, but which would be a lot faster. It would only take me five minutes if I jump the wall. But that's, um, I mean, I'm not in the physical, I, I can't jump a wall physically. <laughs> yeah, I think um, for walls work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think um, yeah. If mm. if they want to encourage uh, people walking from place to place, they should build, um, I guess, neighborhoods that allow easy access to um, grocery stores. And you can walk across the street and still have your single family home, but yeah. we're not building that system. We're still building the same crappy system we built for 80, 90 years. And I think that's going to have to change. I think more people are going to have to wake up. And it saves you money. It's more social. It's more beautiful. The most beautiful cities are, in the world are like that, actually. But uh, the problem with this event is that Al Gore's record is not that good. He doesn't drive the most fuel-efficient car. I've seen it. He doesn't live in the most energy-efficient car. And another problem with this individual is that he promoted NAFTA. And you know, NAFTA, of course, and all these trade deals with China encouraged those countries to pollute even more. And so his records speak louder than his words. And of course, I actually have reports of him that he actually met with Kenneth Lay, you know, Enron. Have you heard about that scandal? Yeah, Okay, well, but that's the thing. So, you know, we'll agree we have to reduce emissions, but I think it's how we do it. And it's about these people as well, because, you know, Mr. Reed, uh, you know, he's promoting solar, but then there's a lot of scandals that admit that those projects were too costly, and then they got a lot of power to kick some ranchers off their land to build a solar farm. And, you know, we don't want to kick people out to build solar farms. I mean, you know, people have private property rights. So uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that some of these guys, they mean well, but maybe uh, what they're taking us is kind of a trap? Are you aware about that? I'm um, not really aware, but I think people should definitely... Possibility. Yeah. I think people should practice what they preach. So if, if they're trying to promote one idea of being energy efficient and trying to reduce emissions, they should also be trying to practice the same things because um, it can be really difficult to like mm -hmm. try to reduce your own carbon emissions and mm -hmm. but I think if if they really want to make an impact they mm -hmm. have to show it to other people that it is possible right well one of the things I think one of the issues when we just talk about planning is that it's good and you live in a home and you can walk 200 feet to buy a loaf of bread in a small little gift shop. Kind of like you see in those old fashioned villages or Disney or kind of those films. But the problem is a lot of people want to get on their car, drive to the Walmart or big box store and do their shopping. Here's the problem. The manufacturing of the car produces emissions. The driving of the car produces emissions, even if it's like electric the pavement of the parking lots, the electricity needed to power those huge stores. That requires a lot of electricity because I think at the end of the day, we should just use less and we should just figure out walking as an alternative to the car in some of our trips rather than just getting the hybrid or the electric car because that still has an impact on the environment. What do you think? Um, I think it, if you put it on like a... I guess like if, if you look at it through, I guess like Americanized, because if you go to other places throughout the world, um, like walking 30 minutes is just walking 30 minutes. It's not nothing. You know, you see old people um, who have issues like, who, yeah, who can't walk really well, but they'll, they'll 
walk like 10 minutes just to um, go mm -hmm. buy something. So I think it really has to do with our mentality um, as as a culture just like I, I feel like as Americans we have like a very consumerist culture like we just want to consume and it's just kind of like whatever is quickest or but did Mr. Gore hold the Wall Street bankers and Federal Reserve accountable the same with Harry Reid because the problem is is that Bill Clinton deregulated the banks and that caused the meltdown we had 10, 12 years ago with the banks got bailed out and Las Vegas was one of the hardest hit. And I believe Mr. Reed voted for the TARP bailout to basically pump up these Wall Street tycoons that got away with a lot of fraud. So I think one of the things that is causing all this consumerism is this cheap credit. You know, People can buy these homes out in the desert because they can get no money down loans, they can get these low rates, and that's what's causing. If you shut out all the credit, you can argue that that's bad for the economy, but then the environment is put in a better place. And then we can also encourage that it encourages more Americans to save rather than just being kind of slaves to the banks. Because in a way, what's causing a lot of people to come to UNLV is this cheap credit that people can get those $30,000 tuition and loans and everything. What do you think? Um, so I'm kind of lost with your question. Do you think the banks are fueling the environmental problems we have today? Um, well, I, I don't know enough about that issue to really have an opinion on mm -hmm. it. I haven't looked into it myself. Do you realize um, the gap between the rich and the poor has grown a lot in the last 40 years? I haven't really looked into that. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, I think mm -hmm. learning, like, financial habits starts at a really young age. Um, I know when I was younger, like, my parents always taught me, like, a percentage of what you make you have to give, the other percentage you have to save. why Americans are struggling in this economy and one of the things and I kind of find it ironic is Mr. Gore is saying we should bring in these refugees all these people coming in because of the so-called climate crisis the drought in Honduras but I could argue that one of the reasons why we have environmental problems is because of immigration so if somebody from Honduras or my dad who comes from Iran comes to the U.S., they're going to give out more emissions because in those areas, people drive less, they consume less. And then with all the immigration we have that's been pouring into Las Vegas, which of course gave people like Harry Reid the votes to win elections with the Culinary Union, but with all these people coming in, that means more people have to buy more homes, drive more, people spread out, a neighborhood changes and then other people move out to Henderson and Summerlin. So do you think that immigration has to you know, change or uh, be halted or anything for things to make a difference? Do you think that? Are... Um, well, from my understanding of Al Gore's presentation, he wasn't necessarily um, speaking in favor of bringing in immigrants or a big like portion mm -hmm. of immigrants to the United States. Mm -hmm. My understanding was that he said that climate change is causing the issue of immigration mm -hmm. and people wanting to come and that could lead to other issues such as um, economic struggles within the nation. Mm -hmm. So I think if um, if you solve like this issue of climate change, of droughts and floodings, it could also cause mm -hmm. um, like less immigration, which would be good because then we wouldn't have so many people coming to one place all at once mm -hmm. um, I know that if, like from and humans have done it throughout history I mean they keep moving and moving and moving yeah. because of you know droughts or whatever I mean if you look at history but you know then again the point is is that if somebody comes from a less fortunate country to the US they're going to produce more emissions now those third world countries are more polluted than America if you've been to China really bad pollution but from what I know, one person emits and consumes less resources per capita than somebody in the U.S. And you can argue that 
people, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm just letting you know because I think these people need to address those issues to be more valid. And by the way, in an area close to where my dad came from by the Persian Gulf, I think a while ago they had a heat index value of 153 degrees, not temperature, heat index. So that's what it felt like with the Persian Gulf humidity and the desert heat. And which is to say, do you think that we can learn from older cultures or other cultures to build our structures so we rely less on air conditioning and heating? So like we have these huge towers that can capture the wind, mix it in with water and natural cool air comes out. And Yeah, I think, um... I, I actually just came back from a renewable energy conference, and a lot of, um, I guess... They use air conditioning in here, and even though outside it was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know uh, a lot of them were bringing in ideas from cultures and other societies. I know, or I've heard in some countries that they, in order to store um, solar energy as heat, they store it in sand which is very interesting. I know in Nevada, they're using salt to, um, yeah, they're, they're using molten salt to store heat as energy to later um, use that heat to generate electricity throughout the day. So I think the, the more we know, the more, and the more we can learn from previous, or um, the more we can learn from what's been used in the past, the better we can use renewable energies and lower our emissions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Well, that looks very natural to me. You look very natural, oh, I must say. Thank you. Your style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's your name again? I'm Kimberly Gonzalez. My name is Cyrus Ojadi. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. There's a lot of talk about the environment, sustainability, and everything. Bottom line is, our main problem is our economic system, global system, whether it's capitalism, socialism, communism, they're all flawed. And as long as we're going to have a system where people profit over others and not care about the well-being of other people, where customers are not really aware of their actions, these problems are going to continue. That alone is the true system. Perhaps the resource-based economy, the Zeitgeist movement, that's talked about Peter Joseph. So self-important. So self-important. Everybody's going to save something now. Save the trees. Save the bees. Save the whales. Save those snails. <laughs> and the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these fucking people kidding me? <laughs> save the planet? We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. We haven't learned how to care for one another. We're going to save the fucking planet? I'm getting tired of that shit.